hello students today we will discuss features of uh, inflammatory bowel disease now inflammatory bowel disease is characterized by chronic inflammation of uh, gastrointestinal tract uh, it is characterized by chronic inflammation of the wall of git now as we all know the wall of git is made up of uh, main four layers innermost is called as a mucosa below mucosa is a submucosa then muscle layer and the outermost layer is called as a serosa now inflammatory bowel disease includes two diseases namely ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease we will also study uh, the similarities and differences between these two diseases now a uh, first feature uh, to be discussed uh, about the two diseases is the region or the part of uh, gastrointestinal tract affected by the chronic inflammation now in crohn's disease any part of uh, gastrointestinal tract wall uh, from mouth to anus can be affected by the chronic inflammation now terminal ileum and colon are the most affected uh, parts now majority of the patients suffer from ileocecal disease that is majority of the patients suffer from inflammation in the wall of ileum and the wall of cecum now cecum is the first part of the colon so majority of the patient suffers from ileocecal disease now ulcerative colitis the chronic inflammation is restricted to the wall of colon and rectum then the pattern of inflammation chronic disease shows skip lesions that is a patchy inflammation that is patches of inflammatory tissue is seen alternating with the healthy tissue so focal mucosal inflammation healthy parts of intestinal intestinal lining is found to be mixed in between the in between the inflamed area that is the patchy inflammation that is a skip lesion that is the inflammatory tissue alternating with the healthy tissue now ulcerative colitis shows continuous inflammation now our next feature is the tissue uh, layer involved in the crohn's disease inflammation is the transmural inflammation that is inflammation can extend from mucosa and submucosa to include the muscle layer and the serosa that is inflammation can extend through all the layers of the uh, bowel whereas in the case of ulcerative colitis inflammation is confined to mucosa and submucosa now ulcers now since here all the four layers Uh, of uh, gastrointestinal tract that is mucosa submucosa um, muscle layer as well as the serosa can be involved therefore the ulcers are deep ulcers these are serpentine a long knife like ulcers whereas in the case of ulcerative colitis since mu only two layers that is uh, mostly mucosa and submucosa are involved the ulcers are superficial ulcers broad base ulcers now causes in both the cases the cause is idiopathic the cause of neither the crohn's disease nor ulcer ulcerative colitis is uh, exactly known now pathogenesis uh, genetic factors uh, they play a major role in crohn's disease and uh, uh, first degree relatives are at higher ri risk similar is the case with the ulcerative colitis genetic factors play a dominant role now in crohn's disease mutation in no2 gene that is nucleotide oligomerization binding domain 2 gene is found to be associated uh, with the crohn's disease whereas such link between no2 gene and ulcerative colitis is not found now in both the crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis there is a dysfunctional host immune response Uh, to gut microbes that is uh, there is abnormal interaction between gut microflora and the immune system of the body and uh, this abnormal response to the gut microbes causes excessive generation of pro inflammatory cytokines and these uh, cytokines or inflammatory mediators uh, they cause inflammation and this inflammation perpetuates and it uh, continue indefinitely and this causes uh, chronic inflammation uh, in the gut wall and inflammation further can result in the ulcer so uh, this uh, abnormal interaction uh, between the gut microflora and immune system of body uh, plays a very important role in the pathogenesis of both crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis however the exact cause is unknown Uh, both the diseases are idiopathic diseases now apart from this 
uh, in the Crohn's disease, T helper 1 cells and tumor necrotic factor, uh, that is one of the pro-inflammatory mediator, plays a significant role in causing chronic inflammation and ulceration. Whereas in the case of uh, ulcerative colitis, T helper 2 cells, uh, then uh, one of the pro-inflammatory cytokine interleukin uh, 13 and tumor necrotic factor alpha play extensive role in perpetuating inflammation and uh, inflammation further causing ulceration. Now uh, talking about the symptoms, now Crohn's disease is characterized by diarrhea. Sometimes blood in stools uh, is also seen due to rectal bleeding. Now as far as ulcerative colitis is concerned, it is characterized by bloody mucopurulent diarrhea. Uh, uh, now, Crohn's disease, the other symptoms are nausea, vomiting, weight loss and abdominal pain. Now, other symptoms of ulcerative colitis are frequent diarrhea, loss of appetite, tenesmus, uh, that is fecal urgency and abdominal pain. Now, complications, complications of uh, Crohn's disease. First complication is the uh, cobblestone appearance of mucosal surface. Now, mucosal surface is the innermost lining uh, of the wall of gastrointestinal tract. Now, as we all know that Crohn's disease is characterized by chronic inflammation, that is inflammatory tissue. Now, inflammatory intestinal mucosal tissue appears uh, as, if it is, it, it, as if it remains below the level of normal healthy mucosal tissue. And this gives cobblestone appearance uh, to the mucosa. Now, another uh, feature or complication of Crohn's disease is the non uh, caseating granulomas. Now granulomas are the clusters of immune cells and these granulomas they show signs of uh, necrosis or destruction. Now chronic inflammation leads to the formation of these non-caseating granulomas and these uh, non-caseating uh, granulomas they are found in the intestinal wall and the, uh, this is a hallmark of uh, Crohn's disease. Another uh, morphological feature of uh, or complication of Crohn's disease is the crypt abs abscess. Now crypt refers to the glands which are found in the intestinal epithelial lining and chronic inflammation leads to the accumulation of neutrophils in the crypts. Now uh, these neutrophils they destroy the crypts. So that results in the formation of crypt abscess. Then fibrous structures another complication of uh, Crohn's disease. Now, as we all know again that chronic inflammation uh, is one of the main characteristic feature of uh, Crohn's disease. Now, uh, cycles of inflammation followed by healing leads to the formation of fibrous uh, scar tissue. Uh, so, this scar tissue is termed as a uh, fibrous structures and these fibrous structures are responsible for narrowing the lumen of uh, intestine. So, this is a a uh, major complication of Crohn's disease. Another is the intestinal fistulas. Now these are also produced because of the chronic inflammation and these fistulas are abnormal tunnel like channels between intestinal loops or between intestinal loops and other organs like for example intestine and urinary bladder, intestine and skin. So this is another important complication of Crohn's disease. Then uh, perforation and uh, peritoneal abscess. Now as we all know that uh, in uh, uh, Crohn's disease the inflammation is transmural inflammation and it, and it involves, it can involve all the layers of the wall of GIT that is from mucosa and submucosa to muscle layer and serosa. So if all the four layers of uh, uh, the wall of colon or GIT are involved then it can result in perforation or it can result in hole in the wall of GIT. Further to this there is leakage of uh, uh, GIT content or the intestinal content into the peritoneum resulting in the peritoneal abscess. Now talking about the complications of ulcerative colitis first is the perforation of the colon. So inflammation uh, of uh, colon followed by the uh, formation of ulcers can further result in the perforation or the uh, formation of holes in the colon. Then another problem is the tonic uh, toxic megacolon. Now due to chronic inflammation colon loses its muscle tone and it dilates and that is called as a toxic megacolon. Now ulcerative colitis can also result in the development of colonic ulcers. 
Now, apart from this, uh, ulcerative colitis is characterized by pseudopolyps. Now, uh, as we know that uh, there is inflammation in the wall of colon and rectum. Now, regenerating intestinal mucosa sometimes bulge into the lumen as small elevations. And these uh, elevations are called as pseudopolyps. Now, pseudopolyps are uh, most of the time seen in ulcerative colitis. Then uh, reoccurrence after surgery. Now, reoccurrence of uh, Crohn's disease after surgery is common uh, because here inflammation is seen, can be seen in any part of GIT that is from mouth to anus. It's not confined to one part of GIT which if removed can pre prevent the recurrence. So, it reoccurs even after surgery. Whereas ulcerative colitis does not uh, re uh, reoccur after surgery because ulcerative coli colitis is confined to rectum or colon. So, once uh, the uh, inflammatory area that is the rectum or colon uh, is removed, it does not recur after surgery. So, this is in brief on inflammatory uh, bowel disease and a brief comparative study of uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Uh, if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.